Well, hello, everybody. I am excited to be doing this review today of one of the latest uh, fantastic mods that are out there for Hearts of Iron 4. This is called The New Order, The Last Days of Europe. And I just want to read to you the description. And then what we're going to do today is just kind of take a look at the mod. I'm already doing a series on Hearts of Iron 4, so I'm not planning on doing a full playthrough of this mod. That'll definitely happen at some point. But for now, I just want to kind of give you an overview and let you take a look at the new order and see the interface, see if, uh, some of what it has to offer. But first, some background. World War II has been over for 20 years, but its legacy still lives on. The German Reich reigned supreme from the Atlantic Sea to the once great city of Moscow, ruling Europe with an iron fist. Thousands live and die every day under German tyranny, yearning for a freedom that may never come. But all is not well in the Reich. Hitler lays on his deathbed even as the first German Romsonat lands on the moon, and already the vultures pick at his corpse. Albert Speer, Martin Bormann, Hermann Goering, uh, Reinhard Heydrich each prepare to take power in the Reich as the world waits with bated breath for the storm that is surely coming. Outside of the Reichstag in the megacity of Germania, partisans prepare for their final struggle, and Heinrich Himmler plots to bring the world to the edge from his Spartanist utopia in the Odenstadt of Burgundy. Across the seas, the United States gathers allies to prevent the fall of democracy in the world, struggling to contain its own politics long enough to tear up the treaties that had ended the Second World War. In Asia, the Japanese Empire groans under the weight of rivals within as well as without. As a hundred different cultures struggle and begin to cooperate in the goal of finally overthrowing their slaveholder. In the Mediterranean, an old alliance feuds with itself. A reformer in Italy seeks to create a hotbed of democracy in Europe as an aging Franco fights to keep control of Iberia. Russia is shattered and dozens of warlords scrabble to pick up the pieces of a broken nation and restore what Bukharin lost. The world teeters in a careful balance. Will it survive to see a new millennium? Or is this the beginning of the end? So let's go ahead and take a look at the map. And then I'll read some of the features that are available right now. Uh, so we can select our scenario. Uh, this is kind of interesting. Uh, so you have kind of some of the main uh, different nations that are available here. Uh, Richard Nixon is in control uh, in the United States. Adolf Hitler in Germany. Uh, Ino Hiroya in Japan. Galezo Chiano, Chiano in uh, Italy, and then you see all these other ones as well. Uh, just for the time being, let's go ahead and select Germany, just so we can look at the map. And so there you can see, this is Himmler's uh, Burgundy right here. You've got the French state, the Kingdom of England, uh, who is under Alec, oh, Alec Douglas Home. Okay, Republic of Ireland, there's Ulster, Scotland, Wales, Cornwall is a separate nation, now the Iberian, Iberian Union. So let's zoom out and look a little bit here. Everything's pretty stable in the Western Hemisphere. You can see how everything's broken up in Asia, though, which kind of makes sense. So right off the bat, the first thing I would say is that it feels like the developers of this mod have a, a pretty good, strong vision of what the world would have looked like. Uh, in the aftermath of an Axis victory. And this is a very plausible outcome to that. I don't see anything that's too crazy uh, or just seems absolutely ridiculous. Now, um, like I said, we're going to uh, choose Germany just so we can kind of take a look at their focus tree, look at the interface a little bit, and see what else this has to offer. So we're introduced right away to a bunch of country info, which is really cool. They, give, they really do a great job of immersing you uh, in what's happening. So here, uh, it kind of even gives you some uh, input in uh, kind of what you have to prepare for with this country. Steer Germany's future through four potential contenders, saving or dooming it in the process. Restore, maintain, or even expand your hegemony uh, across Europe through diplomacy, uh, deceit, and war. Uh, meet the many faces of German politics, align yourself with them, or strive to survive their ambitions. Here are the major characters, uh, Adolf Hitler, Martin Bormann, Hermann Goering, Albert Speer, uh, Reinhard Heydrich, um, who was kind of the architect of the, the final solution, uh, the extermination of the Jews. Uh, Ferdinand Schorner, I'm not familiar with him. Uh, Hans Speidel, and there you go. Uh, so region info, you've got... Uh, kind of the information about what's happening in Europe at this time. 
Uh, here's the mod features, and it tells you kind of some of what's happening here. So uh, economics, a complex economy mechanic. Uh, you can access your economic overview by clicking on the dollar sign in between production and construction tabs. Um, so I'm not going to read all of that. We're just going to kind of take a look at all of this. Uh, it's a complete overhaul. You can see it looks completely different. There's a, a ton of different things going on. Uh, so we have decisions. There's no decisions at the moment. Uh, you've got research. Uh, everything's kind of got this new interface to it. Uh, it. It definitely feels like a completely different game, which I really like. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, they've really put a lot of work into this. Uh, you can see what's already been researched, I guess, is green. So then um, red looks like it's, it's in the future. So they even color code. Uh, what's current research, what's future research, um, etc. So we've got naval research here, corvettes, frigates, destroyers, cruisers, battleships, submarines, carriers. Um, I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of time looking at all the research right now because there's so many other things I want to get to. But I like how they've divided this. i got to say, my first impression of the, of the, the graphics of the interface, I'm not crazy about. But maybe it's because I'm so so used to Hearts of Iron 4 and the kind of traditional view of everything. I do like how it's separated out. It's really easy to follow. I like the production, industry, construction, resources. Um, I like, everything's kind of laid out nicely. I don't like the look, but I do like how it's laid out. So there's that. Uh, here's diplomacy. And diplomacy seems to look fairly similar to how it did before. Doesn't seem to be a lot of change there. Here's trade. Um, and again, that looks fairly similar to what you're used to with Hearts of Iron. Uh, construction. It's pretty simple. There's not a lot. You know, in some mods, there's just a ton of construction op options. They've pretty well simplified this uh, to what you're used to. There's nuclear reactors. That's cool. Uh, so the economy, I'm curious to look at because that's something that they've promised a lot of changes to. Uh, civilian spending, military spending, so you can increase or decrease budgets in different areas. Construction budget, I like that, that there's a separate uh, construction bu budget. Liquid reserves, here's our GDP, our debt expenditures, deficits and reserves income. So you definitely have to do a lot to manage the economy from what I can see here. Uh, there's production, we can see what we're currently producing. That doesn't really look any different than what you're used to with Hearts of Iron 4. Uh, logistics. Now, this is interesting. Um, again, you're just kind of looking at where everything is there. Uh, intelligence agency uh, all requires the law resistance uh, de uh, downloadable content, so that's fine. Uh, so there's research again. I'm not sure why this is all. Oh, this is just our normal tabs. I'm just so used to it looking a certain way. Okay, so now we're looking at our, uh, our nation overview here. Women. Banned from service, uh, conscription laws, military, kill them all. <laughs> okay. Um, training, racial integration, draft exemptions. So you see all of these various things. Uh, slavery is allowed, apparently. Um, economic laws, societal development right there. Uh, you can see the trend on those things. That's interesting. Uh, so you can see here that we are most definitely... Uh, Oh, that's the militarist uh, GUI. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, so we've got these different factions, and this is the current faction that's in charge. Um, so you can see the influence, the power, and the loyalty of that faction. Uh, the leader of the militarists is Hermann Goering. I don't see a way to see the other uh, current factions, only the one that's in power. There probably is a way to do that. Uh, so now we're looking at the national focus tree. Uh, for this nation. We've got Man on the Moon, which only takes 21 days. Interesting. Uh, beyond that, uh, you can kind of see there's not a huge focus tree. I, I'm guessing there's probably more that get added because these are all pretty small. They're pretty short. Uh, so I'm guessing once you get to one of these, you probably unlock new focus trees after that. So we'll play through this a little bit and see what happens. While we're doing that, I want to read just a few other things. 
uh, about the features. Right now, there's 10 years or more of playable content for the three German candidates in the Civil War. Japan, Italy, China, the Iberian Union, Himmler's Burgundy, the United States, and many Russian warlords. So they all have 10 years plus of content. Um, so right now, these are just news items that we're seeing. I'm not going to worry about research too much. Five years or more of playable content for England, Yunnan, Indonesia, uh, much of the Germany Unity Pact, German colonies in Africa, South Africa, as well as Wales, Scotland, and some of the Italian colonies in Africa and the Middle East. Um, engage in economics that change based on your actions, a completely new interface for the Cold War aesthetic, uh, thousands of events written in the highest to the highest standards in Hearts of Iron writing, Man on the Moon! So there, we've landed on the moon. Let's go ahead and pick our next, next national focus. Convene the Reichstag. Not entirely sure how to close this. Ah, so there was an assassination attempt on Adolf Hitler right in the middle of all of this. All right, back to this. An entirely new law and politics system based on Victoria II. That's pretty cool. Uh, fully re re reworked tech tree. Um, an entirely new map built for increased detail as well as a dystopian aesthetic. Uh, thousands of unique focus icons, event pictures, tech icons, and more. New GUIs and gameplay features for almost every playable nation, ensuring no one feels alike. Thousands of decisions, the ability to w wade nuclear war, um, and witness the post-apocalypse, hundreds of secrets to be discovered, and so much more. Now, I have read some reviews that uh, where people have said that um, once they get to the end of the playable content, the game kind of ends. Uh, so obviously it's not finished, and once you get to the end of that playable content, it's not even like you can keep playing even without national focuses. Uh, so, you know, there's only so much to it, but it seems like there's already a lot here. Um, so it looks like now we're going to choose Hitler's successor. We're going to go with the reformer, Albert Speer. So let's see what happens with that. All right, national focus bypass the reformer. Uh, the Presidium of the Supreme Soviet has defeated the Buryat Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republics uh, in, in a war. Hitler named Speer his successor. Let's take a look and see what that means. Okay, now we have a completely new national focus. So, yeah, we're only going to see bits of national focuses while um, new things go down. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so that's part of when they talk about secrets because you don't really know. You can't plan too far in advance because you only see so much of the focus tree. And these are pretty short chunks. You know, this is a couple of months worth of focuses and you're into the next thing already. All right, so we have events and decisions here, and you see the Italo-German great game. Bulgaria, Hungary, Serbia, Romania, and France. Ever since Italy and the Reich split from each other, these nations have been the target of constant diplomatic game of influence. So kind of like a Cold War type of thing, I guess. Uh, the great game is played in five rounds, and the best of five wins, not unlike the game Sede e Mezzo. Uh, both the Italian and German diplomats will face a series of decisions or cards in each round. Starting from a random base of diplomatic effort in the ever-shifting game, the goal is to hit diplomatic success, represented by a value of 10, with the Germans represented by the left-hand card and the Italians by the right-hand card. Uh, push too hard and over 10 and the round is lost. Interesting. So turn one. I have the majority of the issue stalemate in diplomatic battle, and the target might decide that the neutrality is a better option. Uh, interesting. All right, so let's take a look at this. So now here we have the power struggle, and you can see uh, that there's a lot going on here. Adolf Hitler's in fair health. You see the influence of the various uh, main players and things, moderate, 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 minuscule. Uh, you can see that legitimacy is increasing for Bormann, Goering, and Heydrich right now. So uh, all of this is kind of what we're dealing with with Germany, but um, you know, I, I'm getting the sense already that there's no way to really show the depth of this game without actually playing through it, which I'm not re really ready to do right now because there's just so many things that are going to unfold. What I do want to do is just kind of look a little bit longer into Germany, but then take a quick look at a couple of other nations and see what's going on with all of them. 
Uh, but this is definitely very immersive. And if you're looking for something that really immerses you into the world uh, that it's in, immerses you into the story, this definitely seems like it. It feels like you're really going to have so much power in uh, choosing the direction that your country goes. So I'm excited to play through this a little more uh, and see what happens. Uh, so let's see what happens with Germany for a little bit. One of the other really cool things is that even though some of these things aren't decisions, there's been so much care and time taken to give these news articles that give you more and more of the background and a view into what's happening. So every day on the 28th of March, uh, we have a day of remembrance for Joseph Goebbels, uh, which is interesting. So it tells you what happened. He was killed by French par partisans almost a decade ago. Uh, so just those little touches that really don't change the gameplay at all, but further immerse you into the world. I'm really a fan of, and, and I really just got to give a shout out to the folks who developed this mod for, for including things like that. You may have noticed too, that the map looks a little different. Uh, Sicily's a little bigger. Corsica here, um, you know, the Adriatic Sea basically doesn't exist anymore. I believe I read somewhere in the lore for this that they dammed part of the Mediterranean, and that's kind of what has led to some of that. Uh, we're looking here now at what's happening with this game of influence. We're both at 7 right now. You want to be as close to 10 without going over 10. Uh, so these decisions are all relating to that. So now it's five and six. That's turn two. Uh, so we've already gone through turn one, and neither one of us won turn one. We tied in that one. So um, we're going to frame the FF for the attacks. So down here is the power struggle. And again, these are decisions that you make to influence what's happening. Adolf Hitler is currently ailing. So uh, I like how they have the decisions sorted into these sections and you can see direct impact of those decisions as you go about things. Oh, it looks like uh, Heinrich Himmler's Burgundy has got the bomb. <laughs> so that's cool. Uh, that's interesting. That certainly puts a wrinkle in things. Uh, I'm at 10 right now and looks like the Italians have gone over to 12 uh, in turn two of the Italo-German great game. Uh, so what I'm going to do now uh, is, like I said, there's just so much here and I could spend all day just playing through as Germany and, and seeing what's happening. I want to look at some other countries. So here's the United States of America. Years ago, before the talk of the Nazi jackboot and the Japanese tyranny of the Isles, the Stars and Stripes flew high and mightily above the likeness of a different worldwide sickness, that of the excesses of the Roaring Twenties, the explosion of the Wall Street crash and the dread of the Great Depression that journeyed forth, wreaking havoc upon a crippled America. It was here that the ideas of a Rooseveltian New Deal burned, as comparisons to the failures of the Soviets Nikolai Burkharin's own doings uh, left the ideals unpopular and unsupported, and it was here that Al Smith came out on, on top for the Democrats, allowing for then-incumbent President Herbert Hoover to maintain his stay in the White House. In 1936, however, things changed for the United States. Joseph P. Kennedy promised an administration of balance and isolation, seeking uh, to tiptoe away from the breaking out of war uh, in Europe by the Nazis, despite constant pleas from allied states. So that's an interesting way to go with this. Joseph Kennedy was notoriously sympathetic to the Nazis. He's the father of uh, eventual U.S. President John F. Kennedy. Uh, and he was actually the U.S. ambassador to Great Britain for a while uh, and eventually was recalled by Roosevelt because of his pro-Nazi leanings. Uh, so it's interesting that that happens. Then we go to Truman from there, it looks like. So there's so much. Look at all this background uh, into what's going on with the United States. That's amazing. Uh, again, so much depth, more than I could possibly cover and do justice. Uh, so here's the U.S., the Republican Democrat Party is the name of the party. And you can see that it has influence in almost every area. Howard Metzenbaum is one of the senators. I remember him um, in Ohio. You can see the senators from e for each state. Uh, you can see kind of which way they lean uh, in terms of those things. So that's pretty cool. So here is the American focus tree. And you can see it's much more developed because there's not all these different vari uh, variations to, to follow down. It starts with the Nixon presidency, which is where we currently are. And then from there, you've got the campaign trail, 
Uh, so obviously there's a presidential campaign going on. Uh, you can estrange the Democrats, proto-progressives. Everyone I don't agree with is Hitler. <laughs> Boy, that sounds familiar. Um, here's the civil rights dilemma. So this is a big deal of what was going on uh, in the 1960s with the civil rights movement. Uh, so you can bend to the segregationists. You can toe the middle line. You can begin integration. Uh, and then you can see all of that. And I love the images. This looks really cool. I wish the traditional national focus trees had more uh, of this, but uh, they've done a great job with the images for this. I really like those a lot. Uh, over here we have, uh, this is our foreign policy, Cold War uh, isolationist over here. Uh, you have containment theory, which is kind of traditionally the way that the U.S. went, cracking the steel curtain. Uh, I think... Boy, I like this, and I think if I do end up play, playing through this mod at some point, I may start with the U.S. because I like the choices that are available to them. Now, I want to look at research and see if it's different, and you can see it is. Uh, you've got all U.S. weapons here, uh, so I like that they've, they've made all of this specific to the United States. Uh, here's our Naval Doctrine, Green Water Navy, Blue Water Navy, uh, helicopters, light aircraft, uh, you can go all the way up to the F-16s, uh, F-22 Raptor even, up in 1990. Uh, that's really cool. I like that a lot. So let's go ahead and, and start playing a little bit as the U.S. because I want to kind of see what events happen as we play through this. So it's actually interesting as I'm looking at the focus tree, all these ones that are in green have already been completed. So I don't know if we could start earlier or I, I'm not entirely sure why I have all these things in the focus tree if they can't be chosen. Because some of these things have already been chosen. Uh, so maybe there's an earlier start time for the U.S. that I'm not seeing uh, that would allow you to make those decisions at a different time. So there's not currently any other starting time. I think maybe they're eventually going to have one, which is maybe why the focus tree has those things. Maybe there'll be an earlier scenario that you can select. So let's look at our decisions now, because here we have international CIA operations, which is cool. Uh, shifting Irish politics toward democracy, contact Jewish paramilitaries. Uh, then we have the political landscape. And you can see where things are currently. We have 85 senators right now, which is interesting. Um, the end of the missile crisis. And then you've got decisions right here. The Supreme Court increased party unity, congressional situation. Uh, so that gives you a little bit of a sense of what's happening in the U.S. at the moment. Uh, there is the, the missile crisis, and I believe it's the Hawaiian missile crisis is what they call it here. Uh, you know, the U.S. wanting to put missiles in Hawaii, which... Uh, or no, the Japan may be wanting to do that because Japan actually owns Hawaii in this scenario. Other than that, the U.S. seems largely intact. All right, so a lot of things happening here. A protest in Birmingham, the civil rights movement is reaching uh, its crescendo. All across America, there are protests, rallies, and riots hosted by civil rights activists, and they get worse by the month. Just this week, a massive march was held in Birmingham, Alabama, the heart of the segregation of South, with tens of thousands of activists, white and black alike, calling for equal rights. Um, and so uh, that's just giving you kind of some of the things. Class three Senate election season. So they're called classes because every two years, uh, Senate elections are for six years. And so every two years, a third of the Senate comes up. And so they're called class one, class two, class three to kind of distinguish those. Keep America strong and free. Vote R&D or fighting for you and me helped elect the NPP, the National Progressive Party. Let's make it different and see what happens. So now with the upcoming Senate race, you see a bunch of information here. New England, the East Coast, the Deep South. I just I love I absolutely love the detail and the thought that has gone into all of this. Uh, just the depth of the immersion in the politics uh, is really, really cool. And I, I feel like I'm going to like this a lot. Uh, you're going to have to take it really slow, though, because there is so much detail. You can't just kind of fly through sitting back waiting for things to happen. You're going to have to kind of run through this a little bit at a time. So I can choose where I'm campaigning. Uh, now that I've decided that I'm supporting the National Progressive Party, uh, I get to choose where I campaign for that party. And I can see where they're doing well, where they're not doing well, uh, so that I can campaign uh, effectively. I I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm just going to right now just pick somebody that I'm going to spend my focus on. 
So now we're getting Martin Luther King Jr.'s speech and uh, his I Have a Dream speech, so we're getting some information. Again, I love the detail. I love the immersion into what's happening. And it's not just little blurbs either. It's long, detailed descriptions of what's happening. Uh, the President's Daily Brief, and we're getting some information about what's happening in the world right now. Uh, we are choosing in our national focus tree, uh, going down the Bring Out the Tinderbox um, and we're going to strike the match eventually. So we're kind of causing some conflict to happen uh, in Southeast Asia at the moment. So let's look at the military for a second. You can see uh, all the divisions have their real identities. You've got the 101st Airborne, Screaming Eagles, uh, 1st uh, Infantry Division, the Big Red One, uh, the 5th Infantry Division, Red Devils, the 37th National Guard, the Buckeye Division. Uh, let's look at the generals. We've got Max Taylor. Maxwell Taylor was the guy in charge of the first uh, or the 101st Airborne uh, who very famously uh, said to the Germans surrounding Bastogne nuts when they uh, wanted him to surrender. Uh, so you can see some of the other generals. They're all real people here with their pictures. So that's pretty cool. William Westmoreland, who was the uh, overall commander during uh, the Vietnam War. So this is cool. The polls are updated. So uh, going into November elections, it looks like once a month we get an update on the predictions as far as what's happening. Uh, so we can go back and look at the political landscape and see uh, in the upcoming Senate race what kind of a lead uh, the various parties have in different places. Um, so the West Coast seems to be the only place the NPP is doing fairly well. Oh, interesting. National Focus completed the party splits. So I don't know what that means. Do we get some new focus trees from all of this? No, I guess not. Oh, the following document is designated secret 3.4. Fairfax has confirmed contact with the following Filipino rebel organizations. Uh, so this is all part of my uh, national focus tree that I was choosing which was friends in the Philippines. So you can see what happens as a result of those things. That's pretty neat. So here's the divide right now. We've got Richard Nixon's liberal democracy ideology, conservative democracy under John F. Kennedy, authoritarian George Wallace, and social under Henry Jackson. I'm going to go ahead and play the U.S. through to the November elections just to see what that looks like when that part unfolds. So we've got some more decisions to make. And that's uh, where we want to campaign next. And we're going to see how this kind of affects things. I think there's a strong lead in most places there. I'm looking for somewhere where there's not a strong lead. But it seems like they have one everywhere, so I don't know. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's going to be real easy to make inroads with a new form of government. All right, well, apparently by choosing the national focus strike the match we have declared a war on Guyana that's down here isn't it yep so I wasn't expecting that and I don't really plan on doing much with it right now I'm just trying to get through to the November election so I can see what happens with that All right, we're coming up on November, so I'm just curious to see how the results from the election are presented to you and exactly what that means. And then we're going to dive into maybe one more nation, just take a look at that. Uh, so we'll see what happens. I don't know what day the election actually is this year. All right, Hoover's offer. Good afternoon, Dick. J. Edgar Hoover said as he stepped into the Oval Office. Uh, so what is he offering to help kind of screw with the election or what? Hoover cautious and considered asked the president whether it would be best to seal it away. Um, burn it all. So there was this ongoing story talking about leakers and things like that. Here's the class three Senate elections. The political upheaval from the Republican Democrat and the National Progressive Party coalitions. The upper house of Congress has become the battleground for America's hearts and ideals. The makeup of the Senate will soon be revealed to the waking uh, to the waiting public. Okay. So did they just reveal it? 
Here we go. Con uh, elections have concluded. The parties have seen the Republican or the following changes. Republicans and Democrats lost three. NPP gained three. So we won ever so slightly. And now we've got new decisions to be made. Uh, extending an olive branch. Invest in startup companies. This is all about India. So there you have it. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at One More Nation. So here's the Kingdom of England now. And it's not the UK anymore because uh, you can see Wales... Uh, Cornwall, Scotland, Ulster, all separate from the United Kingdom. Uh, so here, uh, decide the fate of England through elections and politicking. Reunite the Isles for better or worse. Play your part in the great game between the Reich and the OFN. England prevails. So apparently there is a way of reuniting the United Kingdom through all of this. So we start out with a very small focus tree, much like Germany's. Uh, so we're going to go through that pretty fast and we'll see what happens. So now we have a choice to make here, and you can see on the surface it doesn't seem like there's a lot of difference between these two because they both kind of head toward the same place. But looking here, you can see down here on the effect, will enable gameplay from the perspective of the government, which includes preparing a safe speech for Edward, uh, will give us the ability to monitor the extent of HMMLR's territorial control via the decisions menu, gets the event man with the plan. Uh, doing the opposite, uh, enables perspective of the HMMLR, uh, including sabotaging Edward's speech. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and help the speech. Here we can see the House of Commons. So this is cool. Uh, government stability, 67%. Here are the parties. Here's the electoral map. There's His Majesty Edward VIII, uh, who is still indeed king. Uh, Harold Macmillan's Mac the opposition leader. Over here we have uh, Alec Douglas Holm, who is the Prime Minister currently. So now we're going to continue down this path a little bit. I just want to get into the next focus tree and see what it shows. All right, so now we have decisions based on the focuses that we've chosen. Uh, and we've got the King's speech. His Majesty King Edward of the House of Windsor shall be making a speech to the people to calm them in these uncertain days to show that our government is always willing to do what is necessary for the safety and preservation of the English people. But there are rumors that HMMLR intends to disrupt this event. Uh, and if our intelligence is to be believed, it's a little bit more than rumors. So we've got to choose what we're going to do uh, to deal with, it looks like the Cornish right now, uh, so let's go ahead and send in the army. And what we can do here with this, and this is really cool, because again, uh, like they said when I read to you the description, every country has a completely different gameplay. Uh, like the things you can do as England, you can't do as the United States. Uh, the decisions are very different. The, the focus of what's going on is very different. Here we get to choose different states and we get to decide uh, how we're going to deal with uh, the HMMLR support in that particular state. So right now Yorkshire's got pretty heavy support, so we're going to deal with that there. Uh, we're going to send in the army to Yorkshire and see what happens. So the king unloved. Oh, tragedy in more ways than one. Um, so let's go ahead down the next national focus. Almost there. Oh, we've actually got to do... No, we don't have to do the other side. Okay. Back to what's happening with these decisions here. we got to continue to put down the support in the north for what's happening. Pro-government propaganda. Let's try that. So it's got a periodic change. It's not happening real quickly. So we can't choose keeping ahead because the safety of the future speech is not more than 80. So we didn't do enough to make that happen. So now we have to choose. Oh, we can't choose writing on the walls either. So I guess we've got to get ourselves to that place where it's either less than 20 or more than 80 before we can choose the next thing. All right, we're almost there. We've got it up to 79% now. There we go. Now we're at 89%. Now we can choose keeping ahead. That'll take 14 days. All right, so what we're waiting for now is we're waiting to see what happens with this speech by the king. If there's going to be an assassination, if there's going to be some threat that happens, that seems to be the initial story for England, is that you're building up to this speech by the king and you're hoping that it all goes well. 
Uh, so we're going to find out what happens with that, and we're going to find out what the new focus is for England as soon as that speech takes place. Okay. God save the king. So I'm not going to read through all this uh, news, but again, there's so much uh, immersion here. So here's our new tree for England now. And again, we're going to get to a new one once this all goes down. Uh, so a, flee to Ger a plea to Germany. Uh, so uh, this is where we get to start really making some decisions about things. So, you know what, that's just a little bit of what this mod has to offer. I'm definitely going to be playing this one at some point. It looks too intriguing, too interesting, too story-driven and immersive not to dive into it. Um, but I don't want to have two series going on at the same time unless you guys can handle that. Um, so I am going to continue playing through End of a New Beginning as Prussia. But this is something definitely I'm going to keep on the front burner. So let me know your thoughts. Drop a like. If you want to see me start playing this and put it in part of the regular rotation, let me know. If you feel like too many series is, is not a good thing, then let me know you'd rather wait until my other one's done. But use the comment section below. Check this mod out for yourself. It's very cool. It's on Steam. It's the most popular one on Steam. When you go to Steam to the workshop page, it's the first one that pops up. So check it out. And thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you again soon.